Chapter 5, Z-scores, Location of Scores in Standardized Distributions, Part 2. So here we have the equation of how we can calculate a Z-score. And um, if we read this, Z is equal to our X value minus the mean. And if we think back to what we learned in Chapter 4, how would we express that verbally? Score minus the mean. Well, that represents mean deviation. And we divide by that by the standard deviation units. How many points does each standard deviation equal? So this is divided by standard deviation of that particular distribution. So what we're left with is a z-value. And again, if we recall the purpose of the z-score, the z-score tells us the exact location of an x-value in a distribution in relation to the mean expressed in standard deviation units. So mathematically, that makes sense. The deviation tells us the distance from the mean. And if we divide by standard deviation units, then we express that deviation in that standardized unit of measurement, standard deviation units. So again, here we say that the numerator is expressed as a deviation score, and the denominator is expressed in standard deviation units. So the end result, a z-score, is always going to express distance in standard deviation units. And you can think of it as in, of, of a fraction. Um, so let's say a distribution has standard deviation equal to 10 points. It's equal to 10 points. And an x value um, is deviates from the mean by 5 points. Right? So the deviation, for an example, is equal to 5 points. So we would say that it's half a standard deviation unit above the mean because one standard deviation is equal to 10 points. And we're saying the deviation um, is equal to 5. Um, and so we would say that the z-score is equal to half a standard deviation unit. So again, if we just consider 5 not being um, completely proper with our equation, but 5 divided by 10, that gives us 0.5. So that deviation of 5 points is equivalent to half a standard deviation unit. So this is what we'll, we're going to be doing with um, our distribution so that we can make fair comparisons between multiple distributions. We can also work backwards. Once we've um, determined what the z-score is, given the mean deviation divided by standard deviation, we identify the location of a score above or below the mean and express it in standard deviation units. And we can also work backwards and actually identify the x value, the original x value, if we know the z-score, we know the standard deviation of the distribution, we know the mean. And all we've done with this equation here um, is you move the um, variables around using algebra to solve for x or isolate x. So we can consider if we want to isolate x or solve for x, we would multiply by standard deviation on both sides. So I'll just use that little, little guy to denote multiplication. And then we would add the mean. So again, this would cancel out, this would cancel out. And then we would add the mean on this side, right, to cancel it out there and add the mean here. And what we have left is x is equal to the mu plus the product of the standard deviation multiplied by the z-score. And notice here it's written different. The properties of multiplication allow us to um, flip-flop those around. Um, so I can write standard deviation multiplied by z-score or z-score multiplied by the standard deviation unit. And this should make sense that what we're trying to figure out is that what it, x is equal to using the mean, right, the center kind of as home base. And then this product tells us how far we have to move away from the mean above, you know, if it's a positive z or below. So again, we start at the center and that product added to the mean tells us where that specific x value is located. So again, we just use simple algebra to solve for x. We isolated x versus solving for um, z. And we can think of it simply as the raw score is simply the population mean, right, the center, plus or minus if the z score is below the mean. 
z multiplied by population by population standard deviation so again that product is just going to tell us are we moving this way are we moving this way from that center of home base you can think of it of the mean of a distribution okay this example is coming from our tax figure 5.3 and it's in relation to um, the question posed in example 5.4. The question is, what is standard deviation equal to in this particular distribution? And we're given some values and we need to figure out what standard deviation is equal to. At this point, we can recognize that the z-score simply establishes a relationship between the score, the mean, and the standard deviation. Again, it's establishing a relationship of how all of these variables are related to one another and it enables us to understand you know, how extreme a score is or how common a score is. And we'll talk much more about that as we move into the next um, chapters that really get into the application of inferential statistics. So if we wanna find out what one standard deviation unit is equal to um, in this particular example, let's use what's given and we can um, use our equation. Our equation is e it states that z is equal to our mean deviation, right, divided by standard deviation. Our next step, and it's always recommended, use ground your um, process in an equation. Replace variables. So what do we know? We know that um, what this visual is telling us is that the score of 59 is one, two standard deviation units below the mean. So that would tell us that this is negative two, right? This would be negative one, and this is zero. And we know that because visually they're telling us from here to here, the end of this arrow, is one standard deviation unit, and it's to the left of the mean, meaning it's negative, and then we're moving over one more. So the score of 59 is two standard deviation units below the mean. So a score of 59 is, is the same as a z-score of negative two. So we can replace that in our equation. So negative two is equal to our x value, x value of interest, right, is the score of 59. The mu is denoted here, is identified as 65. And our equation says divide by standard deviation, which is what we were interested in solving for. So let's simplify this. So negative two is equal to, we take 59, minus 65 and we get negative 6. So now if we want to find out and isolate this variable of standard deviation, we need to again isolate it so we would multiply it on both sides so it cancels out over here. And then we would divide by negative 2, right? So let's rewrite this. So standard deviation is equal to negative 6 divided by negative two. So one standard deviation is equal to three points. And that's what we were asked to solve for. Now we, we used our equation, we replaced variables, and now we've concluded that one standard deviation is equal to three points. Let's go back and make sense of that. So again, our home base, the mean, is equal to 65. If we take 65 and subtract three points if we move down one standard deviation unit so 65 minus 3 that puts us at 62 an x value of 62 and then if we so again each each standard deviation is equal to three points so then we move down another three points right from here to here so 62 let's just confirm our answer make sure it makes sense we're reconciling this answer that we just um, came up with if we take 62 and minus 3, do we get 59? And the answer would be yes. Yeah. So given the values um, presented, we, we had the mu, that was 65, and we had an x value of, x, um, value of interest of 59. And we were asked to solve for standard deviation. So again, we used the equation to solve for z, we replaced variables, and we were able to take the mean deviation and divide by um, the z-scores to come up with our standard deviation. So again, using algebra to isolate the variable of interest will be um, very essential in this chapter and as well in, the, in subsequent chapters. 
So make sure that you have a basic understanding of how to move variables around using algebra to solve for the variable that's missing. And here what I'd like to do is just give you a list of equations um, for the population, for population, or for you, and we have population parameters, or a sample. The majority of our work will be um, in reference to using a sample because that's what inferential statistics is all about, using sample statistics to draw conclusions about a population. Nonetheless, it's, it's important to make the distinction in the equations that if we have a population or a sample that we're working with. So again, we just learned that z is equal to the mean deviation divided by standard deviation. So for a sample, z is equal to our x minus m, which is the mean of a sample, divided by s, which is the standard deviation for a sample. Then we were also presented with uh, calculating x. x is equal to the mu plus the standard deviation multiplied by the z-score. So again, the mu is the home base, and the product will tell us how far we're going to move from that home base to solve for x. Similarly, for a sample, x is equal to m plus s multiplied by z. Again, same process, taking that product adding it or subtracting it depending on what the z value is equal to from the home base or the center of the mean to figure out what the x value is equal to. And then using algebra and um, based on the example I just gave you, if we may be posed with solving for standard deviation. So again, I rearranged variables to um, using this equation, right, to then denote that if we take the mean deviation and divide by z, then what's left over, what we solve for, is the standard deviation of a population, given this notation. Let me just rewrite that a little bit more accurately. And if it's a sample, similarly, s is equal to the mean deviation over our z-score. So if we divide by z-score, take the mean deviation, divide by z-score, then that'll tell us how much each standard deviation is equal to for a particular distribution. And then finally, in some cases, we may be asked to solve for the mean of a distribution. And again, all I'm doing is using this base equation and moving variables around to solve for mu instead of x. So mu is equal to the x value minus the standard deviation multiplied by our z-score. So we're, in this sense, working backwards. Again, the mu is home base. And now we're subtracting that um, product of the standard deviation multiplied by the z. And we're subtracting it from the, the x value so that we arrive in the center to represent the mean of a distribution. And for example, m is equal to x minus the product of standard deviation multiplied by our z-score. So again, when we're solving for x, we're using the mean, adding that product. If we're working backwards to the center, right, here's the center, and that's not drawn so well, whatever our x value is, right, and we want to work back to the center, we're going to subtract that product um, from the x value, whether we're above or below the mean. So these equations are helpful, um, but I do recommend that you Use your basic algebraic um, skills to solve for the missing variables, but you can rely on this um, to aid you in solving for the va values that are being requested in each problem, whether it's in your homework, quiz, or the exam. All right, here's a learning check to ensure that we understand the equations that were just presented and are able to apply them. For a population with the mean equal to 50 and the standard deviation equal to 10, what is the x value corresponding to z equal to 0.4? And I'm going to visualize this. So I'm going to begin with my distribution. And um, the mean is equal to 50, so that's there in the center. And we, we know or are told that standard deviation is equal to 10 points. So just um, out of curiosity, you know, if we move up one standard deviation, what would x equal? So 50 plus 1 standard deviation unit would equal 60. Okay, and then we want to know 
what is the x value that corresponds to a z-score that's 0.4 standard deviation units above the mean. So we can think of it as 40% of 10, right, because this is 0.4 of this. This is one standard deviation unit, and we're saying we're going up, moving up one, a fraction of that. Um, and so our, we know that our x value is going to be in here somewhere. So what is x equal to? So our equation indicates that x is equal to the mean plus our z-score multiplied by our standard deviation. So let's replace variables. The, mean, the x is equal to the mean, which is 50, plus the z-score, which is indicated of 0.4, multiplied by our standard deviation of 10. So again, we're taking a fraction of one standard deviation unit and adding it to the mean to determine what x is equal to. So x is equal to 50 plus 0.4 multiplied by 10 gives us 4, and we get an x value of 54. And that would make sense, and I highly recommend that you draw um, these distributions out so that you can make sense of your answer. Does it make sense that a score of 54 resides between a score of 50 and 60. And of course, that would um, the answer would be yes. And what we've just determined here is that, again, the z distribution can be written here underneath. The mean is equal to 0. Um, point 4, a z score of point 0.4 is the same as a score of um, 54. So this would be point 0.4 here. And then a score of 60 would be one standard deviation unit, one standard deviation unit above the mean. So all we've done is relabeled these values. The, the, the shape of the distribution is not affected. We're just now indicating that a score of 54 is 0.4 standard deviation units above the mean. A score of 60 is one standard deviation unit above the mean. So we take our our original x distribution convert it to z distribution score so that we understand the exact location. So our answer is x is equal to 54. Okay, true or false? If a mean of, of population is equal to 40 and 50 corresponds to a z score of 2, then standard deviation must equal 10 points. Let's draw this out to see if that makes sense to us and then we'll use an equation to affirm and we would um, place 40 here, and we're saying that uh, a score of 50, 50 is two standard deviation units above the mean. A score of zero for the mean of 40, if we're talking about our z distribution. And um, does that make sense if we're moving up two standard deviation units from 40, would that place it as 50? doesn't seem right, but let's use our equation just to make sure uh, or determine what the standard deviation is equal to. So we feel pretty confident right now that it's not equal to 10 because if we went up 2, that would place us at a score of 60, right? So we we're questioning this, and what we can do is use our equation, z is equal to x minus mu, divide by our standard deviation, and if we say the z-score um, and I didn't mean to cross that z-score out. I, was, I meant to cross out the standard deviation equal to this, um, and not the, the z-score. So we know that the z-score is equal to 2, and we take our score of 50 minus the mean of 40, and we divide by our standard deviation to find out what the actual standard deviation would be equal to. So 2 is equal to 50 minus 40 gives us 10, divide by your standard deviation. And so if we want to solve for standard deviation, again, we multiply on both sides, right? Cancels this out, this out, divide by 2. And so our standard deviation would equal 10 divided by 2, and that gives us 5. So the, in this distribution, the true standard deviation would equal 5, not 10 points. And then let's go back to our drawing here. And if standard, one standard deviation is equal to 5 points, then if we move 1, that puts us at 45, and we move 2, right, 2 standard deviation units, that would place us at 50. So this statement is false. 
the true standard deviation for this particular distribution is equal to 5 points, not 10. And then the next one. If a standard deviation is equal to 20, a score above the mean by 10 points will have a z-score equal to 1. Okay, so is it z equal to 1? So let's just consider this visually, a distribution with mean in the center, one standard deviation equal to 20 points. Right, 20 points. And if we say we move up 10 points, right, from the mean in the center, which is equal to zero. So one standard deviation is here. So if we, and that's equal to 20 points. So if we move up 10 points, that puts us halfway to one standard deviation unit. So this would be 0.5 standard deviation units. And we would conclude that the statement is also false, that 10 points above the mean would equal a z-score of 0.5 because it's half, right? 10 points is half of 20. So it would be a score equivalent to half a standard deviation unit above the mean. And that concludes part two of chapter five. In the next um, lecture video, I'll be discussing the process of standardizing distribution, which requires that we have a predetermined mean and standard deviation to create um, another distribution. So we have our x distribution, our z distribution, and now we're going to create a new x distribution with a predetermined mean and standard deviation.